Hi everyone, welcome to Facebook Live. We are at Symposium 2018 and so glad to have Bill Doherty with us here today. A good friend to the networker, um, been around Symposium for many years now. Old as dirt. <laughs> so Bill um, at Symposium today was presenting about his work as a couples therapist, but Bill also um, has done some really interesting work in the last couple of years, I think specifically, maybe beyond, um, in the area of being a citizen therapist. Tell us, Bill, what it means to be a citizen therapist. Yeah, a citizen therapist is this idea that we are not just professionals delivering services behind closed doors to individuals, and that's all we care about is those, how those people do, but that we are members of a democracy. Okay, that we, we have uh, a, a responsibilities to the larger community, to the larger public health. Mm -hmm. And so one of the questions I ask my students is, how does your work as a therapist contribute to people living in a democracy? And the way I define democracy is, is people having collective agency that is, and personal agency, and that is responsibility for one's own life and our collective responsibility for life in a community where we can solve problems together. So my kind of provocative question is, how does psychotherapy contribute to a vibrant democracy? That didn't come up in graduate school. <laughs> and how does psychotherapy, <laughs> how does it? Is well, it? sort of at the individual client level, you can think of, of therapy as about how, having people taking ownership of their lives. Okay. okay, and not being buffeted by forces from their past or by, by toxicity around them, okay, and in the culture, but having agency, having um, a, a, a knowledge of self that allows them to be responsible agents of their own lives. And if you want to think of it, that helps them be responsible as a citizen in a larger community. And that, um, you know, I had a, I had a graduate student, a couple of them, who were going back to dictatorship countries mm. where it was very hard to do psychotherapy mm -hmm. because if you are actually having people take responsibility for their lives they can get in trouble mm -hmm. and that helped me understand that psychotherapy depends on the freedom in a democracy and it depends on a, a, a place where we can take responsibility for our lives you can't do therapy well mm -hmm. in in a country that is not free mm -hmm. and if we think of our work as helping develop citizens, mm -hmm. not just voters, mm -hmm. but people who have re agency mm -hmm. in the world. It's, it's an inspiring way to think about our work. Okay, so we're developing citizens, but are we actually having political conversations with those citizens in therapy? Well, nowadays we are, <laughs> okay? So uh, this, this term that I once heard in Latin America, uh, after the, our most recent election, I think it applies to the work of a lot of therapists, and that is political stress. Mm -hmm. Political mm -hmm. stress, mm -hmm. okay? The, the way in which what is going on in our public, uh, in, our, in our political world, um, is affecting the emotional lives and the interpersonal lives of our clients. And it's there for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, so I do a lot of couples and family work, and one of the ways it's affecting them is a lot of people have struggles and challenges and even cutoffs from people in their families mm -hmm. uh, over the election. Mm -hmm. And for lots of other people, there's personal stress and anxiety. There are people relapsing with their depression yeah. and their panic attacks are back uh, because of the massive degree of political and public stress we're facing. And therapists have not been geared to pay attention to that and talk about that. And how do they do that now? How should they do it? Well. It, it, in a way, uh, political stress is can be dealt with in therapy just like any, any other, other stress. Okay. And that is, how is it affecting you? And then there are two kinds of coping uh, that come out of the psychological literature. One is passive coping, and that is, how do you buffer yourself? Uh, don't watch, uh, you know, network news all you know yeah. all the time. Yeah. Uh, don't talk about this all the time. Uh, get your sleep. Get, you know, be with your friends. The, the buffer I call that buffering coping. Mm -hmm. And the other is active coping. And so, um, do you want to get involved publicly or politically? Do you, you're going to get connected with the Me Too or the, the gun control or something? Mm -hmm. Or one woman I talked to, 
she just decided that when she ran into somebody in the parking lot at Target who looked like they were from the Middle East or Africa or something, to just say hello. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And that was a way for her to demonstrate her values. Okay. And that's active coping with political stress. So a client is coming in and they're 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 coming to therapy and they're really stressed about what's happening sociopolitically, but they're coming to therapy, so they think they're coming to therapy to actually talk about what's happening with their partner, what's happening with their kids, what's happening with their depression or their anxiety. Now they're free to talk to their therapist about what's Yeah, happening. if the therapist is open to it. Okay. And it, how does the therapist let them know, now you can, now you can, you can. Yeah, well, well, some of it is, like, I have in my intake form, uh, after they fill out various depression inventories and others, I have, I have a couple sentences to say that sometimes people are feeling stress about what's happening in the larger world, mm -hmm. in, you know, including their community and the nation and in politics and so on. If that's happening for you, write a couple sentences about it for me. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Now, you know, some people do, a lot of people don't, but that's a signal before people even see you the first time, yeah. that this is okay. Yeah. It's kind of like in doctor's offices when they began to ask questions about depression and other things. It signaled that your doctor is okay with this topic. Okay. And when you did that, did people come in wanting to talk to well, you? Well, some people did, that? yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and, uh, uh, and I have colleagues who, who've been, I have a colleague, for instance, who, who put, after the election, he put a, a little, a, a little one pager in his uh, waiting room that said, um, I, I know a lot of people are kind of worked up these days. Mm. I'm feeling some of it myself. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk about this, I'm open to it. Mm -hmm. Two thirds of his patients wanted, to. wanted to. Isn't there a danger, though, of a client pressing you about your own political affiliation when you open the door for that kind of discussion? It's no different than uh, they want to know how your marriage is, okay. or, or you know, if you're talking about the spirituality, you know, yeah. what's your, you know, are you religious, yeah. right? Yeah. So we know how to handle that. Yeah. Okay. How about out in the community when when you want to be an activist in your community? Any hesitation there if you're if you're, yeah, that's a great question because if we have to be neutral as citizens in our community in order to be effective therapists, we ought to hang it up. Okay. Okay? Because we have a role out there um, as just individuals but also as, as therapists. So we're dealing with uh, gun violence as an issue nowadays. That's a public health issue and a mental health issue. Mm -hmm. And if therapists are so afraid of speaking about that in public because their clients are going to be upset yeah. or people are not going to come to them, hang it up. Yeah. So here's my concern for 2017 and beyond. Now we, ha we seem to be much more divided. Yes. So what was blue, what was red was always maybe blue and red, but now blue and red are our, our colors or our colors. Yes. And that kind of division seems a little scarier for a yes. therapist to be public about yeah. their own affiliation than it might have even just a couple of years that's ago. That's right. And, and that's why this is not a prescription around the red-blue thing. Uh, it, as opposed to like gun control or something you feel is a public health crisis. Okay. Right. Yeah. But the sort of general red-blue, I think that's a, that's a question for everybody to decide how public they want to be there. Okay. okay? Um, but, uh, but my own engagement around red-blue is with a little nonprofit called Better Angels. Yeah. Uh, in which I decided that um, just as in couples therapy, I'm able to have both people feel like they're heard and that they come here and that I'm equally invested in each of them. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to help them bring their best selves mm -hmm. to each other. Mm -hmm. um, I discovered I can do that with the red-blue uh, split. And so I've designed workshops that Better Angels is doing around the country where we bring seven reds and seven blues together mm -hmm. for either a half day or an all day. Uh, and, and going through a set of exercises in which people come to understand each other beyond stereotypes and find common ground. Okay. And, um, and so this is an example of, of uh, this is how, one of the ways in which I'm a citizen therapist. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Because as a therapist, I can, I think, uniquely bring something to people understanding each other across differences mm -hmm. in a way that as a therapist, for me to simply uh, is say I'm blue all the way down, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's fine, yeah. but that's not a distinctive contribution, yeah. okay? Yeah. Uh, a distinctive contribution around the red-blue thing for me is to say that I can help people 
come to understand each other and find something in common. So I would love to hear your insights on this, and I know we talked about it a little bit in the magazine, you covered it a little bit, but to me it's like a citizen therapist pipe dream, this idea of the bus tour yeah. the, and the red, the red blue kind of coming together. Y you're in these situations, you're using your couples therapy skills while you're doing this work. How do they come into play? Well, you know, it's I'm using more than my couples therapy skills, I'm using my small group skills. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, when I trained in graduate school in the dark ages, we actually learned group dynamics at the same time as we learned therapy. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that sort of vanished. vanished okay? right. And so I, the first skill set I have is how to set up a group experience that is a container uh, for people to hear each other. Now, that's also what happens in couples therapy. Mm -hmm. But in couples therapy, you're, you're digging a lot deeper into it all. So, uh, so yeah, you can think of red and blue as, as a couple, uh, but it's uh, the, the therapists, and we have training for therapists who want to learn to do this, but they have to do group, they have to learn to work with groups mm -hmm. uh, and to help, help, a, help a, have a container in, in which to me, yep. in which there are ground rules that you, you really enforce well. Okay. So it's therapy, but it's, it's small group work. So let's talk, I, you had this beautiful story um, about the tour where you were in a group and someone was talking about how the, the blue side was putting up those signs about love, we love everyone. No. Uh, um, the lawn signs, yeah, right? They, and this was a real trigger for yeah, the red side. It, the sign said, hate has no hate home has no here. Home. That's right. That's yeah, right. It, it, there no wasn't home. we love everybody. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> hate has no home here. Yeah. Um, all over the town. Yeah. And reds, Took, took this as like in their homes, hate has a place. Yeah, yeah. And they were button heads. Yeah, but the blue side hadn't. They sort of hadn't made that connection. No, they didn't see it. No, as, yeah. this is one of the things I've learned about working with reds and blues is that blues tend to be clueless about how arrogant and elitist they come off. Mm -hmm. Um, and that reds feel very much uh, put down mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and treated as if they're, they're Neanderthals. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it's a kind of a, you know, a, um, a blind spot with mm -hmm. blues that they mm -hmm. didn't imagine that their neighbors would, the day after the election of Donald Trump, would see this as an attack on them. So when they're at doing a workshop with you, are they coming to those conclusions? Oh my gosh, actually. Maybe that would have hurt somebody's feelings. Do they come away with it with some better understanding? Well, yeah. Some, now, that was a one-off workshop okay. Okay, for that particular community. Yeah. But a lot of blues realized. And the way we had it happen is we, we, we had what we call fishbowl exercise where the reds were in the middle. The blues were sitting around on the outside listening in. Mm -hmm. And I asked the reds, what's this been like for you? Mm -hmm. And then people got to tell stories of their kids being bullied, mm -hmm. uh, their, their kids being told, um, I won't play with you anymore. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay, yeah. uh, and and they told some kind of anguished stories that oh, okay, yeah, jeez, I'm I'm sorry that's happening. It's, it isn't what I wanted to happen. Yeah, but you could see it was the it wasn't somebody looking somebody in the eye and saying what you did got my kid bullied, right? right. It's like telling an anguished story in your own group of reds, yeah. and then the blues were in the middle. And they got to talk about what their intentions were from this. Okay. And, and some of them saying, I feel really badly that it has come down this way. Okay. Because that isn't what I wanted. Okay. I don't see my neighbors as haters. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and, and in fact, some of them said, I was making a, a statement, national statement about a kind of the uprise of uh, yeah. xenophobia in the country. Not I'm not saying that my door. neighbors, I was making a bigger statement. Yeah. And I, I, and I feel badly that it got misconstrued. Now that they're sitting face to face with someone That's who's right. telling them such a thing. Yeah, but actually they're not face to face. Okay. They're listening in when a group talk among mm -hmm. themselves, that's right. yeah. okay? Yeah. So that's an example of creating a container for learning because if we're face to face, uh, then, uh, and you're the blue and you tell me that's not your intention, I might say, well, it's the effect. And then you say, it isn't what I meant, yeah. okay? And yeah. we're, 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 we're activated. Yeah. Whereas if you're the red and I'm talking among the blues and you, the rules are you cannot respond, you're just listening. Yeah. 
and learning something. Yeah. You can breathe. You can say, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm not going to be quite as judgmental of you okay. because it's not this. Right. It's right. not this. So for therapists and other people who are just getting really fed up with the division yeah. and really feeling like this has gone too far, we've got to be able to come back together in some way. Suggestions for that and then also what do blues need to learn and what do reds need to learn to be able to come back together? Well, for, for therapists, we could start with ourselves. Um, one of the ways to be a citizen therapist is to work on one's own affective polarization. Um, I'm not saying don't be as blue or red as you want, but to work on the, in, an internal emotional state in which I disdain 43% of my fellow citizens yeah, who right. still support a president I don't like, right. or if you're a red therapist, I disdain these arrogant elitist blue people. Yeah. Okay? In other words, um, to, to one of the things we can do, since we're kind of in the business of not getting emotionally reactive or of managing our reactivity, that's what we're supposed to do, right? Yeah. We could work on that ourselves. And so I talk about this working on the better angel part of me. So I have a polarized part, a partisan part, and I ventilate that sometimes. And my wife and I are having a glass of wine, and go for it, Bill. But then there's another other part of me that's the better angel part. And the better angel is from the Lincoln phrase, the better angels of our nature. Of our nature. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and there, when somebody who I'm close to says, I can't understand how somebody could have any sense or rationality or integrity and and, and hold this viewpoint or be for that politician, I, I can answer that question. I can answer that question about how somebody could see the world that differently. Uh, and it doesn't mean I agree with them. Mm -hmm. And so a therapist could work personally. But there's half a million of us in this country, okay? Right, right. If we worked on our own internal emotional polarization, by that I mean working on our disdain uh, dislike, mm -hmm. animosity towards mm -hmm. our fellow citizens, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, that would be a great start. Okay. Um, so the, my one concern about all of this, therapists can do this excellent work, you can do this excellent work going across the country doing it. What about the media? What about these divisions that continue to be fed to to our culture? Are we up against a, a very big problem? Here? It's a huge problem. Yeah. And it, it's been building for 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not going to turn around. It, it did not start with uh, President Trump. Right. Okay? Uh, and you have to, it's like a big ocean liner, and you have to gradually turn it. Mm -hmm. But I want therapists to not, most therapists are blue. Okay? And I don't think we serve our country best just by being blue. Um, activists who disdain the other side. Mm -hmm. That doesn't help our country. Um, I, I, we, we treat red people, we treat blue people, and we can work on ourselves. And if I could put in a plug for Better Angels, mm -hmm. we have a way uh, we, to train people who have mental health and group skills to how to, be, how to be agents of healing in their communities. Okay. So if people want to learn more about Better Angels and get this kind of training, what do they do? Google Better Angels. Oh, okay. Yep, uh, and um, it's, it costs ten dollars a year to be a member. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and our agreement is we train you for free, and we want you to give it away free. That's wonderful, free training. Okay. And and you give it away. Okay. It's a citizen work. Okay. So that's going to be pro bono meeting yep. with people. Yep. That's the agreement. Yep. How are you getting interest? Oh my goodness, we can't keep up with it. Okay. Yeah. That's good news. Bill, thank you so Hi, much. My pleasure. What a great interview. Great. Enjoy the rest of the symposium. Will do. Bye, everyone.